Hello YouTube, I'm PCGN's Dave. And I'm Jacob. Yes, this is our new hardware guru. Everybody say hello. Hello. Hello, hello. yay. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Intel's 8th gen core processors. This is their new range of CPUs coming this year. OK, so Intel's 8th gen core architecture. Um, this is going to be the replacement for Kaby Lake, which was the 7th gen architecture, which only came out in January. So it's a bit weird that Intel are replacing it so quickly. AMD might have something to do with that. Um, so when's it coming out? Well, we're kind of expecting it to come out around October 10th towards... Intel have definitely confirmed it's going to be towards the end of the year, before Christmas, or before the holidays. Yeah, so at Computex, um, they went on stage saying that um, desktop and mobile parts are going to be coming in before the holidays. So that's around October time. And then they did their live stream. Yeah, which was a very awkward cut placement that said October 10th. So it was two awkward cut placements, but either way, not... Nah, not and, it was, and it was too awkward <laughs> to have not been deliberate as well. That's yeah. the other thing. So yeah, we're, we're expecting the desktop chips, especially to be coming in October, probably October 10th. Um, but they have also already kind of released some Intel 8th gen chips. So they're the laptop ones, they're the back to school ones. So we'll see actual laptops coming with those in around September, end of September time. Okay, so the interesting thing about the 8th gen is going to be Intel's first mixed architecture generation. So with the 7th generation, it was Kaby Lake all the way through. Um, but with the 8th gen, we're talking three different Yeah, so we're going to have Kaby Lake Refresh, which is out now, Coffee Lake, which is going to be upcoming, and Canon Lake, which sometime next 2018. year. Yeah. Okay, but we're also going to get three different production processes in this. So Kaby Lake Refresh is essentially the same as Kaby Lake, but with a slight tweak to the manufacturing process. So that's going to be 14 nanometer plus. And then we're going to get Coffee Lake, which is 14 nanometer plus plus. And then Canon Lake is going to be the first 10 nanometer production process. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the difference is between the 14 nanometer plus and then the 14 nanometer plus plus, and well, if there's any difference whatsoever, really. Yeah, probably not a great deal. Of all the three different architectures that's going to be in the 8th gen, Coffee Lake is probably the most interesting, and that's going to be the one for us gamers, really. Yeah, the desktop processors that we're going to be having. Um, is the big news is there's going to be an increase from four cores to six cores on the i5s and i7s, and it's kind of whether those are going to be free cores for the same price, or if yeah. that's going to be a little price increase. So that'd be the greatest thing. It's like two free cores, yay, Coffee Lake's amazing. Possibly. Yeah. So um, in terms of the actual cores we get, um, chips we're getting, there's going to be six new cores in the Coffee Lake range. And so they've gone through certification at the moment, so we're pretty confident about what those are going to be. There's going to be two core i7s with six cores, 12 threads, two core i5s with six cores, no hyper-threading, and there's also going to be two extra cores in the core i3 range as well, isn't I it? I think that might be the most interesting one that is actually coming up for gamers. It's, it's going to be, it's, it's odd because we're not sure how that's actually going to, how it's going to shake out in terms of whether gamers are going to want to go, well, actually, so the Core i3 K series is going to be essentially the last gen Core i5 K series, but which for $100 was, less. Which was perfect for gaming on. Yeah. If it is the case, then gamers that, got very lucky with this one. So. Yeah, I mean, that could end up cannibalizing the sales of the Core i5, because the Core i5 is generally the one that, that gamers go for in, in an Intel generation. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. So we've got the 8700K, um, that one's going to be a 3.7 gigahertz base clock, um, which is a little on the low slot, of the low side. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit low, but in terms of that, that's sort of like the base clock, then we'll have turbo boost going mm. through and we've got multi, multi levels of turbo. So they're talking about going from 3.7 gig on um, just standard base clock, 4.7 on single cores and up to 4.3 gigahertz um, with all core turbos. Yeah, and that's 4.3 on single for the 8600K. So a little bit less, but it should be plenty enough for gaming on. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so when we're talking about processors, we also need to be talking about the sockets, the chipsets, and the motherboards that they're going to go into. Yeah, so these the 300 series chipsets that we're expecting for um, the Coffee Lake desktop process to fit into, um, we're not entirely sure, since ASRock tweeted, that they might not be backwards compatible with the Z270s and 200 and 100 series motherboards, um, even though they actually use the same size socket. Yeah, so it's looking like you're only going to be able to use a Coffee Lake processor in a Z300 series motherboard, which is a bit of a change because Kaby Lake was backwards compatible across the 170s and the 270s, so the 100 series and the 200 series. 
which is strange because Coffee Lake is essentially still using an LGA 1151 socket, so that means it's got 1,151 pins, but there's a potential rumour going around that they're configured slightly differently. Yeah, so this is kind of an artificial constraint that Intel might be designing into the, the chipset itself. Um, to force into, you down. Yeah, into yeah. the CPU itself to kind of force the motherboard uh, manufacturers a little leeway in getting people to upgrade, I guess. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's, it's almost like Intel throwing a bone to the motherboard manufacturers going, if people want Coffee Lake, if they want these extra two cores, they're going to have to get a new motherboard. Um, yeah, the other thing is that AMD have already kind of tagged the B350 the name as theirs, and that nobody else is going to be really be able to use that from now on. Yeah, it's kind of a spanner in the works for Intel. Yeah, they've been doing this kind of AMD and Intel have been doing this like tit for tat number generating thing. It's the worst. Going through, so AMD have already released the the 370 series for their Ryzen chips, and now we're getting a 370 for um, the Intel ones. But what's going to happen with the B350s? Yeah, and the other thing is that um, ASUS also put up on their, was it Computex? Yeah, Computex was, was at a, a, be, a motherboard benchmarking thing for the X399 and the X299, another tip for that numbering thing. And one of the guys came up and said, we've got the Z370s coming for the 8th gen, and we've also got Z390s. So we don't really know what the Z390s are going to do. Yeah, and whether that's going to be much of an upgrade over a Z370. Which is already the premium motherboard. Yeah, which I can't imagine there really will be, unless it's artificially stepped back down again. So we shall see. Well, so that's the socket. But what's it actually going to mean for performance? So Intel have said that the performance difference between the 7th gen going up to the 8th gen is going to be about 40%. Yeah, that was taken from some office productivity benchmarks, and Intel do slightly skew their, their own slides yeah, obviously a little the, bit. It's going to be some marketing fudging going on. Um, but there have also been some leaked slides that have come through also from uh, a, a, a presentation that was given to some Chinese retailers. So it was a leaked slide coming out showing the performance differences between the actual, the specific desktop Coffee Lake chips. So they're saying that going from the 7700K to the 8700K, we're looking around about, I think it's about 51% performance boost, including multi-threading. I mean, that's that's kind of expected having like the extra, extra, extra cores. cores. Yeah. But the really interesting thing is they're talking about an 11% single-threaded performance boost. Yeah, and I think we saw from Skylake to KB Lake, that was less than 10%. Yeah, I think increase. it was like 6 7%. At yeah, so for gamers, the single threaded will be a massive increase. And when we're talking, if we're talking again, talking about the i5 as, as the gamer chip, that had an even bigger increase on, the, on this um, slide. So they're saying it was around 19% yeah. performance boost in single threaded performance. I mean, that's the key metric for gaming, so that could lead to some really interesting performance. And that could be what edges the i5 just out over the i3. Yeah, well. that's true. So Intel are also saying that so when we're going back to the 40% performance boost, uh, they're saying that about 25% of that would be accounted for just from the core boost alone. So the design and manufacturing optimizations should be bringing in the rest of that performance boost. Yeah, so the last architecture, microarchitecture, that is going to be a part of the eighth generation is Cannon Lake, which is following from KB Lake and Coffee Lake, and is the first 10 nanometer part that Intel will be producing. Yeah, so this, this is Intel loving the lakes and bringing us the much delayed ten, 10 nanometer part. So I think this is this is probably what's responsible for the creation of this, this unprecedented mixed architecture generation. This is the first 10 nanometer production process that Intel have managed to get into sort of like full production, but it's looking like they can only manage decent yields at a decent price on sort of less complex low power chips. So the 10 nanometer Canon Lake things are probably going to be going to like the, the two in ones and the really ultra low power, sort of like the 4.5 watt TDP. Parts. So do you think we're going to see Canon Lake parts as a desktop? I don't think we're going to see that. We're not going to see that in the 8th gen. I don't think that's going to come through at all. Um, I think that that's going to be pushed forward if we see Canon Lake coming through in the 9th gen, if that's going to be another mixed architecture. Which, speaking of 9th gen, we've got Ice Lake, which we've kind of been teased, teased slightly teased. by Intel with like one sentence about, um, which was back in June they mentioned it? Yeah, so it's a, it's a little while ago. I mean, they. Back in June, they mentioned on Twitter that everything's okay, guys. 10 nanometers is fine. We're, we've taped in the, the, uh, the Ice Lake part. Um, and then they updated their website fairly recently to, to properly, fully, officially announce Ice Lake as one of the successors to Cannon Lake, um, which kind of essentially 
The fact they're saying it's one of the successes leads us to believe that probably the ninth generation is going to be another mixed architecture and that's how Intel are going to roll from now on. Yeah, there's also likely that the high-end desktop chips are probably not going to be using 10 nanometer even in the ninth gen. Yeah. Um, because maybe yields aren't that high, maybe they can't get the performance out of it, but it's most likely still going to be 14 nanometer plus plus. And maybe that's when we're actually going to see proper coffee lake uh, processors, I assume. Yeah, well, I think I think in the ninth generation we're going to be look, we're going to be looking at a, a range of 14 nanometer and 10 nanometer parts. And like Jacob says, we're, we're probably going to be sticking to 14 nanometer for the high end, high performance six core desktop chips. So that's Coffee Lake going to be still around. The weird thing is, Ice Lake is still an it's a it's a lake architecture. So it sounds like it's just going to be another step on. So Even when they're stepping to mixing 10 nanometer in, they still not kept to the process architecture optimization at all. So I think that model's completely out the window at this point. Yeah, so Intel are just doing what the hell they fancy. Um, but it's kind of related to Ryzen. AMD have produced so much competition this year. It's, it's been an unprecedented year for processors. And this all just smacks of Intel reacting or trying to figure out how to react to a, a more resurgent AMD. So it's kind of interesting times. So that's the bizarre world of Intel's eighth generation core processors. Um, so if you like what you've heard, like what you've seen, give us the old like and subscribe and check back for more hardware videos and more general PC gaming videos on our YouTube channel and on our website. So thanks very much for watching. Cheers.